Hello and welcome to Learn This, the television broadcasting edition. I'm your host, Rob Salter. Have you ever been curious about how some of your favorite TV shows get developed from script to screen? Do you find yourself scrolling through hundreds of channels thinking, I could come up with a better show than that? If you believe you have creative ideas or a visual person and have a drive to share stories, then television broadcasting at Algonquin is probably the place for you. With a high success rate of over 80% of grads finding internships and employment after their experience here, it's no wonder that Algonquin is ranked number one for education and television for Canada. Today on the show, we'll be introducing you to the behind the scenes world of TV production then introduce you to different types of programs such as studio, remote, and field shows. And joining us will be a second year student to show us how to operate a professional studio camera. But first, take a look at this. Hello and welcome to ACTV Morning and News. I'm Warner McQueen. I got a job, um, oddly, I got a job when I was 16 full time at a CTV station in Winnipeg. And um, kind of never looked back. I've been lucky enough to do pretty much anything there is to do in television, and I don't claim to do very many of them very well. But I ended up uh, in my early 20s as a, as a floor director, and then uh, I was a director and producer, and I ended up being um, producer of uh, a midday, noon uh, news and lifestyles program. Three, two. The, uh, for me, individual grades are about, um, about getting a job um, because um, I want everybody here. My whole purpose for being here is to get you a job. Um, so generally speaking, I regard a, a C as uh, you're a student that I would probably hire. Um, if you get a B, you're probably a student that I would be happy to hire. I might have to compete with somebody else for your services, and if you get an A, um, I'd hire you for sure, and I would definitely have to be competing with other people for your services. We're really polishing skills in here. Like um, we set expectations for high standards, and so we are polishing skills. But the skills I'm most concerned about is is the ability to collaborate and and work successfully. To um, to present a program with no faults in it, and one that is has high production standards and and great content that's interesting to watch. Or when students come to me from first year, I expect they know the basics of uh, of shooting and lighting and and all that's required to work in a studio. Um, what I'm hoping to teach everybody is to work as a team and how important that is. And take three. Ready to roll server two? And now we have Hussein Ahmed who is covering Algonquin College. Welcome back. Today we have Zach, John, and Mandy from second year. Thank you so much for joining us, guys. Thanks. No problem. So I was thinking maybe you could just introduce yourselves a wee bit. Uh, John, how about yourself? What about, uh, what's your passion in this program? Um, my name is John Petty. My main passion in this program is producing for EFP, but in studio, I, I like technical directing and technical producing. And what's EFP stand for again? Electronic Field Production. Gotcha. And Amanda? Um, I'm more of a producer. That's where my passion lies. I do a little bit of on-air talent, but uh, producing is my main strength. Right on. Zach, what about yourself? I do a lot of on-air talent, whether it be reading the news behind the desk, reporting in the field, voiceover work. Mainly, that's my, that's my shtick. And for on air talent, because we have that in, in common, mm -hmm. um, what about your strengths in that? How did you find out that was your favorite thing to do? I don't know. It was, it was doing a project at the end of first year that I really found out throughout actually first and second year. I do it a lot of on camera work, which got me a lot more comfortable in front of it. But voiceover work, I opened my mouth at the right time, and a lot of people just said, hey, you had a great voice. And that's just how I came in to be at that. But it's just about being comfortable on camera. Right on, what you do. And could you do that radio voice for me? You, you want to do my, you want to hear my radio voice? <laughs> yeah. uh, it's the Algonquin News Broadcasting Program. Ah, television. <laughs> I love it. It's good times. <laughs> and Amanda, when you're finished here at Algonquin, where do you plan to be? What's your goal after this? Uh, probably moving to Toronto and working for some eTalk or Entertainment Tonight and doing, uh, producing something for them. Good old ET. Love yeah. it. Love it. 
And for yourself, John, I was wondering if you could tell me a little bit about uh, what you would say the school experience gave you to get into the industry. What, what do you think? It pretty much gave me everything I know today. I came into this program not knowing a thing about television production, okay. but now I know so much. Good and program. Oh, definitely. Right on. Um, Amanda, what's a producer responsible for exactly? A uh, producer is responsible for the whole production from start to finish. They are in charge of uh, everybody on the set, um, the director, um, and making sure everything gets done accordingly on time, um, and just having all the right paperwork. And uh, for yourself, what would you say, Zach, makes a good honor talent? Like, how, what are your tips for people to get tips? into that? Presentation and pronunciation. You gotta present the way you look. You know, you're, the way you're dressed, the sharp, you dress, dress real sharp, real nice, your mind will follow. You get a good presentation going on, people will believe you're a professional. Pronunciation, make sure you just speak clearly, know what you're saying, and just have a good knowledge of what you're talking about. What is a TP? Because I, I heard that term thrown around a little bit. What, what's that stand for? A technical producer is pretty much in charge of every technical aspect of a studio show. Uh, they need to know every piece of equipment, and more importantly, how to fix it if it were to fail. Thank you so much for joining us, guys. That's awesome. Thank you very much. We now go out onto the street live with Chelsea Cuffey to see how many people know about Algonquin College television broadcasting. No okay. idea. I think it means, like, I don't know, either setting it up or tearing it down, one or the other. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure exactly. Yeah, I would say that it means set or, like, making one up quick or something. I think striking, for some reason, for some reason, class to be taking it down, but I'm not sure. Striking is set? Yeah. Um, something to do with volleyball? Uh, is that sort of setting the stage of, like, what's in the shot? Weight balancing? I yeah. really don't know. Weight balancing? Mm -hmm. Balancing the white set. <laughs> um, adjust for the glare of the sun on my skin. Video recording. Yeah. Video. video. Uh, a shot of the dark. Yeah. What about you? Uh, same thing. I mean, I wrote the multiple videos. Yep. So yeah. 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 You know what school he graduated from? Guess where he graduated yeah. from? I uh, know. Right on. I know he went to Colonel Bay High School. Did he go to Algonquin? Post secondary. Did didn't he graduate from Colonel Bay High School in Ottawa? I mean, like. Post secondary, I got into college. Did you go to Ottawa? Yeah. You are so good at this. Uh, now, the second year students and I are going to show you how to set up a camera for an EFP shoot and how to get recording. John, thank you for coming on. Not a problem. Awesome. So we've got a tripod here, it looks like. Yes, we do. Um, well, I know about that much. That's the extent of my knowledge. Could you maybe show us how to set this up properly? Uh, the first thing you want to do with a tripod is, that, is to extend its legs and make sure it's nice and flat and sturdy enough. The second thing you'd want to do is lift it up so that the lens of the camera is dead on level with the eyes of the subject if you're shooting a person. Okay, so it's going to be level with their, with their eyes, okay. Yes. Lock it off. The next thing you want to do is make sure the head is balanced, which well, I see you can tell from the little there. bubble. Okay. And now my lovely assistant Amanda is going to bring me up my camera. There she is, thanks. And the camera should snap right into place. Right on. Now, okay, so we've got this big studio camera here. What makes this basically different from the one I've got at home, like my little camcorder? Um, this camera here is built for, for studio production. The back part of the camera, it's called a studio back. It pretty much allows us to plug in the CCU cable, which transfers all control of the camera to the technical producer who would sit in the control room and make adjustments to the camera. What's CCU stand for? Uh, camera control unit. Oh, okay. So basically, this wire makes it so we can control everything from you can the studio. Just the white balance, the aperture. Oh, okay, I got you. Now, microphones. I see this big honking mic here. Like, we're wearing microphones on this set for the show. Uh, what's different about this one from the ones we're wearing? Why has it got this big sponge around it? Uh, this sponge thing is called a windsock. It's meant to cut out noise a wind would make, like if you're filming outside. Okay. And this microphone here is called a shotgun mic, as opposed to our lav mics, which have a very shallow 
pickup pattern, these shotgun mics have a much wider pickup pattern and it will pick up pretty much every sound that's in front of the camera itself. So it's specific, it's like, it's only picking up that sound that's yes. pointed at. Anything it's pointed at, it will be picking up that sound. Oh, okay. So say we have, we've got Amanda over here for us to show us how to set up a beautiful shot. So how would we compose a really good shot of someone if we're taking a... First off, you would want to get your subject into frame. You would zoom in on Amanda, focus in on her eyes, and just focus up. Oh yeah, okay. Make sure she's nice and composed. Very nice. Knock off the camera and just adjust your exposure, which you would do with your aperture ring right here. Exposure. I was going to say, she looks a little bit pale on camera there. She's not, she's fair skinned, but she's not that white. So how would we change that up a little bit so it looks correct? You would just want to close on the iris, which cuts the amount of light going to, to the camera sensor. The iris? Yes. Okay. And closing it down would cut the light, was opening it, up, opening it up, but allow more light to get in. Right on. And then, okay, so she, we've got our shot composed. Now, anything else we need to know about how to set this up properly? Um, outside of making sure she has enough headroom, which she could use a tad bit more. She's, she's nicely exposed, she's in focus. She's in focus, the background's kind of in focus too. What if we don't want that to be in focus? What if we want that soft, dreamy effect like you see in some shows like, like CSI, you see that kind of dreamy, soft background. Can we do that? Uh, yes, you can. Three things make a shot of depth of field. One, the distance from your subject. Okay. Two, the aperture. And three, light. Right now, I have my eyes wide open. Amanda's in focus. And if I were to slightly zoom out, you can see that oh, the beautiful. background is slightly out of focus. Oh, yeah. Is that ever nice? I love it. So how much would a camera like this go for exactly? A camera like this would be about $15,000. Oh my god, that's pretty bad. So can other cameras do this that I could get for myself, like at the store? Um, some, there are some prosumer cameras like the GoPro, which are, re are relatively cheap in comparison, and but pretty much give you a nice high definition video. Thank you so much for joining us Not on the problem. show. Really appreciate it, John. So as you can see, the studio is where all the decision making about putting visual elements comes into place all at once. When talent performs on a set, there may be a huge elaborate stage with a live audience or there may be as little as a green screen and one single camera. Either way, a studio set provides TV shows the opportunity to put the pieces of footage, graphics, music and sound into the studio so they can be mixed together in one session. News, daytime shows, uh, live spots, all use this method of production. We also have a large green screen, as you can see behind me, which we can put any background onto. Pretty cool, eh? Tune in next week on Learn This when we'll be going into more Algonquin programs and letting you know what this college has to offer.